Having taken this exam myself recently, let me tell you some tips and tricks on how to get through it alive. It's a challenging exam, and just having the right strategy can make a big difference. First of all, look for keywords in every question that you read on the exam, and try to dissect exactly what it's telling you in terms of requirements. This is really key to doing well on the exam, I think. So this is a fake question that I made up. A large news website needs to produce personalized recommendations for articles to its readers by training a machine learning model on a daily basis using historical click data. The influx of this data is fairly constant, except during major elections when traffic to the site spikes considerably. Which system would provide the most cost-effective and reliable solution? So I've bold-faced here some of the key phrases here that should inform how you evaluate the multiple choice answers to this specific question. Let's uh, break this down. So first of all, it's telling us that the consumer of this data is going to be readers on a website. So that tells me that this data needs to be published as something that is very fast and can be scaled out to the public world at large. You know, So automatically that's telling me something like DynamoDB maybe that can scale pretty much infinitely using a NoSQL kind of database. It's also telling me that it only needs to be trained on a daily basis. So there's no real-time streaming requirement going on here. Just infrequently updating a model is good enough here. So I can get away with something like Firehose as opposed to a real-time solution like Kinesis Streaming. Okay, so given the choice between those two, that's something to keep in mind too. It also talks about patterns of access to the data. It says that they do have spiky access during a major election, so we need something that can be expanded upon pretty easily. That means that we need to gravitate towards solutions that are either serverless or have a way of expanding them easily and cost-effectively. And that's the next thing that I highlighted here, the word cost-effective and reliable. So they are asking that of the following options, first of all, they have to meet the requirements in the paragraph above. And if there are more than one solution that does, you need to choose the one that is most cost-effective and reliable. So cost-effective might push me down the route of a solution that involves spot instances, for example, given the choice between that and something that's more uh, using reserved instances. Reliable might push me toward S3, right? Because that's pretty much the most reliable service that there is. So the answer to this question was publish click data into Amazon S3. S3 ticks off that reliable check mark using Kinesis Firehose, and that's sufficient for doing something on a daily basis. If I was comparing this to something using Kinesis Streams, then Firehose might be the better answer here. And process the data nightly using Apache Spark and MLlib using spot instances, where spot instances hit on that cost-effective part in an EMR cluster. Publish the model's results to DynamoDB, which hits on the end consumer of the data, which is end users on a website, for producing recommendations in real time. So that's an example of how you might want to look for sort of key phrases that tell you about the key requirements of the question you're being given, the scenario that you're being given, and the things that you're looking for to actually differentiate if you have more than one correct answer that meets those requirements. Pretty much every question on the exam is going to take the form of, here's a very specific problem, a specific scenario with specific requirements. Here's what I'm trying to optimize for. And then we'll give you a list of various solutions to that problem. Some of them won't make any sense at all. Some of them will involve made up technologies that just uh, don't make sense. Others will make sense and you need to choose someone that fits the requirements best. So really a lot of it is just sort of studying those questions picking out those keywords and understanding what the requirements are you're being asked. Do not just skim through the questions. This is probably the biggest mistake you can make taking this exam. Take the time to read every word of the question and understand it and what they're asking you for. If you skim through it, you're going to miss an important requirement and you'll pick the wrong answer. Pace yourself. So it is a 170 minute exam. That's almost three hours. And yeah, that's a long time but there's about 65 questions you're gonna to have to get through, and that only leaves you about two and a half minutes per question. So don't get stressed out about that. That is enough time to read and understand each question. You know, we're only talking about a couple of paragraphs here. You can do that in a minute, and that leaves you plenty of time to think about it and put down at least your best initial guess. So yeah, you have to keep the pace going. Uh, don't like dwell on any particular question for five minutes, guys, or you won't finish it. It is actually gonna be a little bit tight, and you will be there for most of that three hours, I guarantee you. If you do get stuck though, it has a feature of flagging questions for later review. So there's a little icon you'll see on every question that allows you to mark that for later review. So if you are stumped on something or you just don't understand the question, do not spend too much time on it. If you think you've been sitting there for more than two and a half minutes, just select your best guess for now and mark it for later review. Then at the end of the exam, you can go back and use any time that you have left over to reconsider those questions that you marked for later review. A mistake that I made was not being generous enough with my flags. So there were a lot of questions that I wasn't totally sure about, but I just kind of like went with my best guess and kept on going. 
I kind of wish in hindsight that I flagged those questions so I could go back and think more about my answers on them. So don't make that mistake. If you're not sure about it, flag it, and you can come back and take a second look at it. In my case, I had about a half an hour of extra time at the end of the exam when I did my first pass, and that was plenty of time for me to go back and look at those flag questions and really give those a little bit more attention and try to give my best answers that I could for those. So follow that same, same strategy. Spend you know a couple of minutes in each question. If it's taking more time than that, put down your best guess, flag it for later review, use any time left over at the end to go back and rethink that question. So do make use of that feature. Finally, just hack yourself to arrive prepared and perform well, whatever that means for you. By all means, get a good night's sleep the night before. You want to make sure you're well rested and not nervous. Uh, that would be bad. Uh, but do whatever you need to stay alert. Uh, this test rate does require a lot of stamina. You're talking about three hours sitting in a little booth, um, you know, probably in a very quiet and boring environment, looking at very intense questions. And that requires a surprising amount of mental stamina just to get through it. If you thought the SAT was hard, this is probably harder, guys. So uh, do whatever you need to do to stay alert. I'm not going to recommend any particular uh, beverages that might keep you awake. But if that's how you do it, hey, I, I don't judge. Do, do what you got to do. If you do, however, go the route of taking caffeinated beverages. Make sure you go to the bathroom before you go into the test. You don't want to lose time to a bathroom break. That, that'll be awkward, trust me. And arrive early. The exam location may be hard to find. Um, I'm glad I arrived early because in my case... The exam location was actually located behind the counter in the back of a restaurant supply company, and I had no idea that's where it was. It was very hard to find. There was a uh, there was a, a door next door that looks like that was where the testing center was, but it wasn't. You know, so I had to like go in there, see, find a sign on the door that says this is not the testing center. Go next door. Went next door, looked around a while. Finally, asked someone at the front desk where is the testing center, and they said, "Oh, it's out back. Let me go get someone for you." So, uh, you don't want to arrive late, guys. That would be that would be really bad. Also, beyond this course, there are additional preparation resources you should definitely look at and be familiar with. Uh, by all means, definitely, definitely, definitely download and read the AWS Big Data White Paper. It's called Big Data Analytics Options on AWS. And it's a really good overview of the main services that will be on the exam and their limitations and ideal use cases and anti-patterns. So it's a really good summary of a lot of the stuff that we've talked about in this course so far. Um, there'll be links for all of these things in the uh, resources for this lecture. So you can just go to look for the resources and download them directly from there. Also, AWS offers a free online prep course of their own. It's only two and a half hours and, you know, it's kind of high level and covers some stuff, frankly, that's not on the exam. But, hey, it's free and any additional preparation you can do is always welcome, right? Also, there are white papers from AWS available on Kinesis, the database migration service, and migrating applications to AWS. Uh, there are a surprising number of questions on the exam about moving data from one database to another and reading those and being familiar with those white papers will help you be successful on those. Also read the exam overview page from AWS. It also includes a few sample questions. There are 10 sample questions they give you and the more sample questions you see, the better. And also make sure this is not your first certification exam. This was actually my first certification exam and I, I did manage to pass it, um, but it was not easy. AWS does recommend that you have at least an associate level certification going into this. And really there's a lot to be said just for knowing what to expect on an AWS certification exam and not being surprised by it. And definitely take our practice exam that's included in this course. You'll see that shortly. And we have a very, uh, what I think is a very realistic simulation of the exam itself. And you should go through that and judge for yourself if you feel ready or not. What constitutes a passing grade? Well, they don't tell you, um, but from what I've read online, People have gotten like, you know, as low as like 70% or so and still pass this exam. So that tells you that it's a very difficult exam and a lot of people really struggle with it. So you cannot prepare enough for it, guys. Uh, it is a tough one. So go and take advantage of every resource you have. Do all the practice you can and arrive ready when you show up for your exam.